from Zakaria before we go to the Hagim next week and we can finish up this uh, negative part of the answer that uh, the men from Bethel came to Jerusalem from the, the northern Bethel there uh, and asked about should we keep the ninth of Av is where we were last week remember and so instead of Hashem giving the um, answer to the fast question there he instead gives them a history lesson and a lecture on your fasting has not been proper anyway. So he will not answer the question about fasting clear until the end of chapter 8, pretty close to the end of chapter uh, 9, and, and uh, uh, so, or, or chapter 8. And, and so, so we have this negative answer about them uh, not heeding the warnings that were given to them from the Lord. And this is why they went to Babel in the first place, and now they're back from Babel, Babylon, and have rebuilt the temple. And so we have this dialogue going on from uh, people from the former northern kingdom asking in Jerusalem, including Zechariah, about the ninth of Av, which is the fast day for the destruction of the temple 70 years ago. So we have verse 8 in chapter 7. And uh, remember we left off with grace and mercy is, is what we need in this country. If you're reading Harbinger 2, which I'm about two-thirds done with now, it is the same story as Israel. And, and what we have had, what Israel had, was Harbinger's warnings. And Israel did not listen, and then they were conquered. <sighs> so... Uh, <clears throat> We pray for grace and mercy and, and repentance in this nation. And you know, it first has to be in the church, but I, I think that the church is to some extent uh, repenting and crying out to God, a lot of the church. And, uh, but it needs to carry over into the uh, leadership of the country, the political area of our country, for it to save us. So we're hoping in this future time that there will be uh, grace and mercy enough for God to raise up righteous leadership in this country in addition to Trump. Most, um, as, he's, uh, as he's been more that direction than, than others have for a long time, including the former uh, president, but, but um, what we need really is the Supreme Court because it is the priests of our nation. The high priest of this nation is the Supreme Court. And so in, in the Supreme Court has, has let us uh, offer our children the Moloch, that's called abortion, and has now uh, in 2015 made it illegal to prohibit gay marriage, which is, is these, these things are, are uh, going against God. So uh, the, really the and I tell people that don't like Trump in the store, I go, you don't vote for him, you vote for the Supreme Court. Because that's his main job, and this is what the future will bring up, is for uh, righteous Supreme Court leadership. So uh, that's what we need, though, in this country, is, is some repentance. Uh, not just in the church, but of course in the church. But also, it has to carry over, or there will be judgment. And, God help us, and I think that there is some hope for the NFL because what um, the, the uh, foundation, what, what carries the NFL is money, lots of money. And all of a sudden, if the, if the fans quit watching, then there would be no money. Now, I think that would cause a change in the NFL because these spoiled babies that get a hundred million dollars a game will then have to think about something else, like getting a job washing dishes, something like this. You know? And so, so anyway, if everybody stops supporting it, then they'll go broke, and then we could start over with maybe a, a patriotic uh, sport again, instead of this political nonsense that is from the pit of hell. Oh my! 
<clears throat> I didn't mean to talk about that. Uh, and I was wondering in Israel, remember, and, and also in Sodom and Gomorrah, which is a picture of, of what happens to a country that, that mocks God's holiness. Uh, God, or, or uh, um, remember, they, he was, they were asking God if he could find just 500 men with, with spirit. Wasn't that Sodom and Gomorrah uh, town? And, and uh, well, they never could find 50. Well, I was wondering if anybody has a direct line to heaven, if you could ask God how many dedicated believers, I mean, I mean, not, not perfect people, because we know the number is zero then, uh, but, but serious, dedicated believers in this country, there could be 50 million out of 300 million, one in six, maybe, maybe, well, at least say 20 million serious God-fearing people in this country. Wouldn't that be enough? See? And I think, you know, grace and mercy. Surely, God, I know our country has, has fallen off the cliff here in the last decade, but, but surely you can find 20 million serious believers to save this country, to withhold judgment for them. That, that would be a nice prayer, don't you think? Uh, and so we, uh, if, if anybody can ask him that directly, uh, get the right number. Okay, so verse 8 is where we are. And the word of the Lord came again to Zechariah. This is what the Lord Almighty says. And, and this should be past tense. In the NIV it says says. But it is past tense in the Hebrew. And it is the Lord Almighty has said. Because he has given these warnings over and over through the major prophets. Now the minor prophets um, also. And, and he says... So this, the Lord Almighty says, I don't know, I'd say, oh, administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Don't oppress the poor and the fatherless. And, and in your hearts, don't think evil. And so we have the heart comes up here, which, which is important, remember? And, but, but then in verse 11, but they refuse to pay attention. So you had the word of the Lord come, to, to follow God, be like God, and they did not listen. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and stopped up their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint. Here again, we have the word heart. Uh, and would not listen to the law, the words of the Lord Almighty is sent by the Spirit through the earlier prophets. And so the Lord Almighty was very angry. Okay, so this is, we're finishing up chapter 7 and, and get to the positive answer to the question uh, which is a much longer answer. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Lord God. So, has said in Rakamim, mercy and, and, uh, um, uh, where, where, where am I at here? Those two words. Oh, mercy and kindness. Kindness is the, uh, Rakamim word, but th they're actually about the same word. Okay. Has said in Rakamim, the, the two words for mercy and kindness. Okay. So then it also has Emmet, Shofatim, you know, Emmet. You all know Emmett. That's the name of Doc on Back to the Future. <laughs> and and it, in Hebrew it's truth. Right? Truth. And remember his dog's name was Einstein, our nice Jewish uh, math guy. He was good at math. Uh, okay, so so uh, um, anyway, at a time machine. True judgments is what that means. And do not oppress the unfortunate ones. And so then this last part, do not even think evil in your hearts towards one another. And so what this really adds up to is you're supposed to be like God in a way. Have God's character, show God's love and forgiveness and walk in it as, as he does. So he wants man to be like him. And so who would go... Uh, uh, oppress an orphan like nobody would oppress an orphan God would not oppress an orphan and and so you're supposed to show mercy okay so why did they go into captivity because in verse 11 they would not listen and here in uh, in America today and and like with the harbinger book this is a bestseller unbelievers read it it should provoke a listening uh, a shema in Hebrew is to hear and obey and it should people I don't understand how, how they can mock God so much and not worry about it. I mean, uh, all of us sin, but, but uh, you generally, when, when we really sin bad, like I'm the only one here, I know, 
whenever we sin really bad, don't, don't you worry kind of about it a little bit, you know? Like you're concerned about what God would think about that. And, and, and so, so here, though, we, we have this country that would not listen. They were not concerned. They stopped up their ears. They turned their shoulder to God in the Hebrew. And here it says their backs on God. And this flint word made their hearts heart is flint, is, is shamur in Hebrew, and in Jeremiah it's translated diamond. It was so hard. And it was used to cut other stones, but it itself could not be cut because there wasn't anything hard enough to cut it. And so this flint word is, is the hardest word you can have in Hebrew. Uh, like like a, a diamond. So this is why they went into captivity, because they would not listen to the law or the prophets, and so it says the Lord was angry. And then in verse 13, it, it will finish us up. When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen. I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations where they were strangers. The land was left desolate behind them. There, no one could come or go. And this is how they made the pleasant land desolate. And so that will end the negative question about fasting here in chapter 7. Uh, when, when they called, I would not listen. That's very sad. Of course, this is temporary here for judgment to come because the judgment is God's last resort to bring people back to himself. And so it's not like it's, it's negative, it's just necessary to get people to return. Okay, and this is what happened. They went into captivity for 70 years and, and it was uh, temporary. So again, the application to the prophet's own time was, was the 70 years in Babel. But here, if you read this in the Hebrew, it is uh, more applicable to our time. And I'll show you why here. I scattered them, or I will scatter them, or toss them, is how it gets translated in, in Hebrew, among the nations, like a whirlwind or a tornado, among the nations they have not known. Notice it's goyim here, not goy. It's not Hagoi, it's Goyim, which means nations plural. When they went to Babylon, it's a singular nation. Now he's talking about the next dispersion for the same reason as this dispersion. It's because of rejecting God in the first century. So this, I will scatter them among the nations, was fulfilled in AD 70 by Rome, where they went into the whole world, not one nation. So what are we talking about here? We're talking more, more AD 70, and then what we'll get to here is, is the good part. But, and this left the land desolate. In, in AD 70, when, the, when the Rome dispersed them and plowed everything, it, it, it turned the land into a, a uh, desert. So the scattering among the nations began with Babylon and, and, and Zechariah's day, but but now they have returned. So this prophecy here cannot be talking about Babylon because they've already returned. And he's saying uh, that now, now they're already back, they've rebuilt the temple, and God is saying, when I scatter you among the nations, plural. So what we're, we're bringing this up to our time, if you hold on a second. So, so this uh, scattering uh, um, is, is now mostly talking about AD 70, and when did this scattering, it lasted more than 70 years. It lasted 1,878 years. 1,878 years, this scattering, much longer. So the land is being desolate, its future tense shall be desolate, and this took place in 70. So the chapter ends with God saying Israel made the pleasant land, the desirable land, the holy land, the covenant land, desolate, and, and the scattering of Israel out of the land. Now Mark Twain was there 100 years ago, and what did he say when he... He spoke of, of the Holy Land. He said it was desolate, worthless, uninhabitable, and ugly. And it was. It was a dump. 
Now the Tanakh said way early on that Israel would be scattered among the nations. Moses was told this and he talked about it clear back in the Torah and it seemed throughout history that this scattering after AD 70 would never end. It really had become only a hope that comes up with Ha Tikva, the national anthem. But other than that, I don't know how many people on earth really believed that Israel could become a nation again. Of course, in the church, they just disregarded it and went replacement. But even in the Jewish communities, the hope had been gone so long that it was just a, a like a dream a dream, I don't know, it was 1,878 years is too long to keep a hope alive, isn't it? No, the Jewish people never gave up, but it would, it would have dimmed. But then, what, you know what happened, the miracle happened. The, the miracle of 1948 happened, and this dispersion was over, and the whole world marveled, and some of them were very upset. And some of them were jumping for joy. And everybody had their radio turned. They didn't have TVs yet. They just were listening to the radio of the UN vote in 47. And then, the, then it happened in May 14th and 48 that Israel became a nation again. And then everybody was watching uh, their, their radio, listening to the radio again because Israel was invaded. And, and it was such a sad day because there was no hope for Israel again because there was no way they could fight. They had no army. They were just a little colony of, of untrained people, no military at all. And, and so then the, the world listened to the radio and heard Israel win miraculously uh, in 1948. And so the dispersion was over. And this is, this is the beautiful part about being alive today is to get to participate. I mean, uh, 19 centuries and there was nothing to really jump for joy about and then today there is so uh, let's look at how Yahoo says it uh, Jer Jeremiah uh, says it in in chapter 31 hear the word of the Lord O ye nations this is Jeremiah prophesying 25 centuries ago and God is saying, listen up, nations. He's not talking to Israel. He's talking to us. He's talking to the world. All the nations that he created. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it to the distant coastlands. Well, that's probably across the ocean. Right? He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will ransom Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion and will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the wine, the oil, the flocks, the herds. They will be like a well-watered garden and they will sorrow no more. Then maidens will dance and be glad. I like this next phrase. Young men and old as well will be yeah. dancing. Yes. See, this is another miracle. <laughs> Old men dancing. Why? Because the Lord has brought Israel back. Now, we've seen a lot of dancing in Israel, and a lot of Israel has seen us dancing. <laughs> but, but I will turn their mourning into gladness, give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow, will satisfy the priests with abundance. All my people will be filled with the bounty. This is how Yahu says it, but he tells the nations, I scattered them and I'm going to gather them. And so we just had to wait 1,878 years and then he gathered them. Jeremiah could not have foreseen the magnitude of what he wrote here. He probably thought 70 years, that's got to be plenty enough. But no, this is, a, this is the 1,878 years, right? So, so we're seeing this in our lifetime and also we're participating in it in our lifetime. And, and remember the main two words about the rejection of Messiah, which led to the, the dispersion in AD 70. The main two words is that it was partial and it was temporary. Not all Jewish people rejected and the ones that do reject, the nation of Israel that does reject, it is 
uh, temporary until the number of Gentiles has come in, then all Israel will be saved, right? In Romans 11, by the way, we have the Romans 11 drama uh, DVDs in the store now. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can have one for free uh, or to give one away. And so, so uh, temporary, yes. Yeah, so that chapter 7 now began with this question, and now... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why God made such a big book. Um, but uh, it began with that question about the ninth of all the morning. And so Hashem said earlier, or as I said earlier, never answers the question directly and gave this history lesson. And the lecture is, is his desire for the heart of man. Remember, he rejected the fasting and the feasting like Sukkot because they were doing it unto themselves without really a heart for the Lord in it. And that was the, the uh, rebuke it had. So it was a lesson, and still is for us and Israel also, how can man be pleasing to God? It is impossible for man to please God without his heart being involved. God is not a robot, okay? He is not a computer. He wants your heart. So he works uh, everything uh, to get our hearts uh, connected to his, and it's a beautiful life, isn't it? It's a beautiful life, going through what we go through for him to draw us closer, and when we fail, he just grabs us and hugs us harder. <laughs> isn't it something? Uh, who, 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 where do you find a God like this who loves to forgive, loves to have compassion, right? And this is why it's fun when you see Muslims get saved, because all they've known is an angry God, which is a false image of God, right? And so, so it's always about intimacy, and, and so we need to be careful today. The church needs to be careful, as we talked about last week, uh, with, with the uh, first uh, sin in uh, seven churches there with Ephesus. So everything, we have everything we need for love, relationship, and intimacy intimacy and for to have soft hearts with God and with people. Love God, love people, you've arrived. So for those who refuse his invitation uh, in these last days, he has provided a class for you to attend, if you will. It's called the Great Tribulation. Uh, and, and see, when you're with the Lord, you're with the Lord. I mean, when you're have relationship with God, you have relationship with God. And and that really is all there is to it. But if you if you don't, don't have that, then the tribulation will kind of lead you into that. Uh, persecution always makes believers stronger. Persecution always brings people back to God. And so then you'll be handed over and put to death for my name in Matthew 24. is not talking about Israel. It's talking about the church. And this is called the Great Tribulation, which is the, uh, the uh, fourth seal of Matthew, or uh, Revelation, okay? So, so anyway, not to get off on, on that uh, story, but, but chapter 7 was the lecture. Chapter 8 is what? The glory. <sighs> so finally I got to chapter 8. This is where I wanted to get to. Amen. So this would be a great place to pick up after Chagim. Again, the word of the Lord Almighty came to me. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am very jealous for Zion. I'm burning with jealousy for her. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth and the mountain of the, whole, of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. This is coming soon to our world, right? And here, he, this is a repeat now. I, we had it in chapter 1 and chapter 2. I am burning, or I am zealous for Zion. But, but now, now uh, we, have, we have this. Uh, um, it, it says, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I am jealous with her with great wrath. And, and great here is used twice in these verses. It was not earlier in the book. But now it's repeated for emphasis how much God desires Zion, how much he desires Jerusalem and Temple Mount and, and the place of his soles of his feet, as we saw in, in Ezekiel 43, which I'll be inserting a, a, a couple messages on Ezekiel's temple sometime in, in this later. But, but the chapter of blessings, this is the chapter of blessings, begins with Hashem repeating his heart for Israel. 
and he amplifies it with the Godola word twice. And, and this word uh, burning or, or with great wrath can be translated heat in Hebrew. And so it is like uh, he is burning with desire for, for Zion. And th this is getting close to, to the return of, of, of Messiah here when we get to this chapter 9. So at this point, where do you want to be standing uh, when, when Messiah is burning with jealousy for Zion and, 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 and where do you want to be standing? Do you want to be opposing him or do you want to be standing with him? The nations, for the most part, a lot of the people even in the church will be opposing his desire for Zion because they would be jealous. Uh, they want all, all, all of it to be for themselves. But, but you are not like that. You will be encouraging God, yay, 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 to go to Jerusalem and sit on his throne and rule the nations uh, from, uh, from uh, the temple on Temple Mount. That, you will be happy. Why, is, why would you be happy when you're not the center of attention anymore? And you will be the center of attention. But you know what I mean. You have to share it. Well, most people don't like sharing attention with the Jew. But you're not like that, you see. You will love to share the attention because you have the heart of God. You have been with him enough where his heart has become your heart. And so this is joyful news to him that is joined unto the Lord. As we will go into the Hagim, joined unto the Lord. Yavarekha Adonai v'yishmarekha. Ye'ir Adonai p'nabeleko v'hu nekha. Yiso Adonai p'nabeleko v'yoseim l'ka shalom v'shem Yeshua HaMashiach sarha shalom. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you <laughs> and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and, and lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Messiah. Amen and amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is coming soon and he will be enthroned in the goal of the whole Bible, the whole plan of God, almost here.